Greg Ritford, the Minister for Indigenous Services, was in Thunder Bay this week. He was at Supercom making an employment announcement. The minister seemed right at home. Here's the story. Men and women. 
there holds the greatest and single biggest opportunity to mobilize, frankly, uh, a group of people who we will absolutely require to build some of the legacy infrastructure like the East-West Tie and some other pieces that I hope within the next couple of weeks to be announcing that will transform um, this part of Ontario. Simply put, we wouldn't be able to do it without that workforce. And so, today's announcement on the trajectory that we've been in um, is supporting an industry-specific opportunity. And that's important because we've gone from research at a university to a training um, agency uh, funded by the federal and provincial government who are ensuring that Indigenous men and women um, have an opportunity and a clear path to pre-apprenticeship opportunities, to skilled trades. Uh, the people who, as my dad famously says, do the real work. Uh, the ones that are out there at 35 below fixing those hydro lines or building those towers. Um, the folks that are building those buildings. Uh, today we, we, um, we saw an incredible opportunity to invite young people in and make, as, as Matt said, a, a, a red seal carpenter. An indigenous uh, guy from one of the one of the um, one of the communities. His name, the one that it escapes me. As he said, to make the road a little less bumpier um, for the next skilled uh, tradesperson um, from one of the communities. And from my perspective, having lived and worked in isolated, and remote First Nations communities, mostly here in northwestern Ontario, to reconcile important word um, men and women who had been working for 10 and 20 years, building schools, building hydro lines, building um, houses, plumbing, electricity, but who would never been recognized formally for the decades of experience that they had. They were only a handful of training courses in an exam away from being a skilled, certified worker, let alone a Red Seal certificate. So here we are today in the community of Fort, uh, Fort William um, uh, at an industry, an industry who is committed to ensuring that um, indigenous and indigenous workforce, and principally from the communities, as, as the screen is showing us here in a series of important slides, um, what the opportunity has shown so far. That a majority of the couple hundred people that are involved in this project are actually from these communities. And it's only going to get better as a result of what I'm about to announce today. In some respects, as I was listening to uh, the elders and to the drum, um, I thought, boy, I, I could come up here and for the first time maybe in my life as a politician not say anything, which I'm reputed for my, for my words, but to just all have us stand here for five or ten minutes and watch this screen. Watch one young person after another from these communities and others um, at 22, 24, 30, and beyond um, successfully complete important uh, training and, uh, and have a job, um, a skilled job. So that's what brings me here today to Supercom. As we tackle a dramatic skill shortage across the province, and here in Northern Ontario and Northwestern Ontario, it couldn't be more pronounced and on full display. But did you know even the forestry sector uh, out here, as difficult as things are right now, there are still opportunities, but they're all for skilled and red seal workers. And we need to fill that gap, and that gap needs to be filled with Indigenous men and women. Um, and uh, Skills Advance Ontario, under the direction of my friend and colleague, uh, Monty McNaughton, just understands where we need to target our investments. Um, the kinds of companies that we should be and could be um, supporting. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce through the Ministry of Labor and Skilled Trades, in cooperation with my Ministry of Indigenous and Affairs, Ministry of Indigenous Affairs Ontario, uh, to invest $1.5 million in Supercon industry, Supercon industry over the next three years. Congratulations.
discipline. It has no loose ends. It's taken a little bit of time for us to put together because we wanted it to be targeted. We wanted to ensure that people with names would complete this training and work at this company um, uh, in the future. And um, to that end, Supercom's, this funding will support Supercom's 172 employees to get the training and upskilling that they need to help this get this transmission line up and running. New and current workers will be getting trained in heavy equipment operation, mechanical harvesting, AZ truck driving, tower assembly, construction, and more. As I said before, the people who do the real work. Not only will this training build the workforce to construct the East-West High, these new skilled workers will help combat our and address our skilled trade shortage. It will arm a new generation of indigenous skilled workers to a number of projects because they all come to an end. The question is what's after and how prepared are you to receive that opportunity? Effectively providing the opportunity for lifelong employable skills for their families and for their communities. This is exactly, ladies and gentlemen, the kind of partnership and training we need in Ontario, we need here in Northern Ontario, and in particular, Northwestern Ontario. And I want to thank Supercom and all the First Nation communities and businesses who are making this project happen through these projects. We're going to help employers beyond just the East-West tie um, find the talent they need um, for the jobs of today and the ones uh, of tomorrow. So it's great to be out here uh, today in Thunder Bay. It's as close as I'm going to get to my home this week. Um, but I have a peaceful, easy feeling when I come to Thunder Bay and feel uh, the warmth and the friendship of, of people from Northwestern Ontario. For my part, I'm Greg Ritford. I'm the member of Provincial Parliament for the Great Kenora Rainy River. It's a privilege and an honor to serve my constituents, but as a friend of Supercom um, and the communities uh, that have rallied behind this by consensus um, to serve you too. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Minister. Um, I have Chris Servan coming up to say a few words, and then we're going to close it off with our video and the questions will be made available. I, uh, I'm deeply honored to welcome Honorable Greg Rickford, Minister of Energy, Northern Development, Mines and Indigenous Affairs, into our office here. I am also thrilled to have representatives from the Ministry of Labor, Trade and the Skills Development, uh, Craig uh, McIntosh and uh, Lucy Lahu. Thank you for being with us here. I'm also happy to, to see in the audience representatives from, uh, from Nextbridge and also Supercom board members. Thank you all of you being here with us at this uh, announcement and celebration. We, for sure, we wouldn't be here without the help of uh, our uh, partners, Nextbridge and uh, Valard and uh, uh, other uh, local uh, partners, the local government and the federal government. We are really grateful for the support that we get and also grateful to our leadership, the six uh, chiefs of our six First Nations, uh, uh, making it happen. If there is a will, there is a way and it's happening and we are so proud of our achievements and what we did uh, so far and looking forward to the future in continuing on, on this path. The recent uh, agreement uh, with the uh, Steel Advanced Ontario, it's, uh, it's a great achievement and the continuation of uh, similar training programs that we had uh, in the past. Uh, now that the project is active, we have uh, a, a real uh, opportunity to see the students after graduating getting immediately into the, into the workforce and I'm happy to, to announce everyone that uh, part of this agreement was uh, having uh, uh, 
10, we ended up with 12 uh, students uh, completing the, the program for a tower uh, assembly. All of them, they finished and they are now at work. So I was hoping to have them here and <laughs> share their story with us, but they are just working. You know, when, when they finish the, the training and the following day or immediately the following uh, couple of days, they go straight into the work. So they can apply what they learn and, uh, and start uh, getting a paycheck and, and realize that uh, they, they have uh, now a different uh, responsibility in front of their families and communities. We work hard with, uh, with some of our elders, including Terry Bouchard here. We made a very special uh, tobacco contract, making sure that they will be serious and they will be uh, uh, responsible for, for the communities and for their families, the way they're going to spend the money, the way they're going to behave responsibly at the job site and making sure that uh, that's uh, clearly understood. Uh, in the coming uh, weeks, we will commence uh, the uh, training program for heavy equipment operators and construction craft workers and further uh, into the summer and into next year we are looking to upskill over 100 uh, previous students or other uh, other workers uh, that are present here on uh, East West Thai Line. Uh, with, the, with the agreement uh, that we, we recently uh, got uh, signed, we're also going to have the funding for uh, uh, safety training and uh, employment uh, manager, the funding for the employment coordinator, Sam, for there. We'll be looking to boost our community presence through three uh, community advisors in one for uh, two communities and, uh, and all the, the necessary funding for making sure that the news are being uh, instantaneously communicated. What you see here, you're going to see in every single community. It's part of uh, community information display. They have a similar TV and it's been uh, updated daily by Sarah and, and Rob. So they get news every day, fresh news, what's going on, and also tailored uh, specifically to, to their communities. So it's a general portion and another one very specific to what's happening in, uh, in their area. Now that's, uh, that's something that uh, we, we definitely want to continue, plus uh, use other communication channels to, to ensure that uh, the, the news are correctly uh, sent to the, to the community members. Um, we are proud to say today that out of the 337 people working on this project, there are 147 Supercom 6 community members, that's 44%, and even more importantly, 207 indigenous uh, community members. So that's over 62%. It's, it, it's impressive what uh, but you see, see here. Uh, you had a chance to, to look on these uh, profiles and the, the recent uh, graduates and uh, where, where they are and how they, they feel and what they say in their own uh, words. I want to ask Robert to play a short video. That's from uh, the power line technicians uh, program that was uh, completed a while ago. But it's uh, it's really important to to feel the enthusiasm and listen to the, to the students at the end of their graduation uh, how uh, how they felt about uh, completing the, the program. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button share this video and keep up to date on what's going on.